Okay, today what I want to talk about is farmers markets, makers marts, getting out there with your cottage food business, your micro bakery, whatever you want to call it, and getting out into the public, making sales in person. My name is Leela. I'm a cottage food baker here in Southern California. I have a vegan bakery business that primarily does wholesale to coffee shops and juice places in the area, but also I do markets. I've been doing this for just about two years now, so I am still very new to the scene, but I wanted to be a part of the conversation and share what's worked for me and what hasn't worked for me in the past two years. Most people who have their own home bakery business are going to tell you to get out there, go to markets, go where the people are. Of course, you can create an online presence and you absolutely should because you can't really have a business now without having an Instagram, maybe a TikTok, Facebook, maybe even a YouTube channel, maybe not. <laughs> that being said, you are selling baked goods. Your customers are generally, at least from the beginning, from my experience, are not gonna come through Instagram. Some of them will, of course, especially as you start to grow, especially as people start to get to know you, but the reason they're gonna get to know you is by seeing you out on the street, seeing you out at markets. Oh, my daughter's here. Do you wanna say hi? <laughs> whatever you can do go to where the people are versus having them come to you through say your instagram account because even if you make it really easy to order online people still will have questions you'll have to go back and forth you know what are you offering how much does it cost how can i get it you know how do i pay for it all these things take time is just one more reason for someone not to buy something from you. They want it to be easy. And oftentimes bakery items, cookies, pop tarts, muffins, stuff like that, that I sell, it's an impulse buy. No one showed up thinking, oh, I'm gonna have a pop tart today. They show up and they see vegan pop tarts and they get excited and just buy it on the spot. I mean, 100%, especially when you're just building your name, you have to go out there. The thing is, and this is what I wanna talk about, the thing is not every market is meant for you. And honestly, not every market is made for bakers, um, especially small batch bakers making things by hand from scratch, perhaps in their tiny kitchen at home, like me, here are the issues that I've seen. Fees, market fees. If you can get into a farmer's market in your area, there's a chance they're gonna charge you a percentage of sales, which is great. Anywhere between say 12 and 15% is a pretty normal fee. Hi. So anywhere between 12 and say 15% is a pretty standard fee you'll get at a market, a farmer's market. And that's not bad, right? So if you have a slow day or the market in general has a super slow day, the organizers are taking a percentage of your sales. And so you don't have to pay that much. We're gonna have to do a little switcheroo. So if you make $100, they're gonna take say 15%, you only pay them $15, right? It's way better than a flat fee because I will say from my experience, Makers Mart specifically, like markets for people who make their own candles, make their own soaps, maybe have a clothing line. A lot of these markets, at least in Southern California, will charge anywhere from say $75, $80 to $200. Those markets, I have not had a lot of success at. Any market I've seen where I have to pay a fee of say $75 to sometimes $200 has not been worth it for me. Here's why. One thing to note is that there is an entire industry, at least here in Southern California, around creating markets. I'm sure the same can be said for say New York or really any major city. And so we have organizers who find places to hold events and they might be lovely. They might be at a super cute hotel, but they're trying to fill spots. At least from my experience, I've even tried to negotiate with some of them on fees. In my experience, it's not worth it and here's why. I'm selling items from between five and sometimes seven to eight dollars, but that's it. That's my cap. I'm selling a five dollar cookie. I'm selling scones. I'm selling a pop tart. I'm selling small items. I'm not selling a piece of clothing for say 50 bucks. I'm not selling a jacket for a hundred. So for me to make back that fee, say a hundred dollar fee, I've got to sell, let's say 20 cookies at $5 a pop. Now 20 cookies is like no big deal, right? Sure. It really just depends on foot traffic, right? So if it's a 
event that's being held on the street, um, you might actually see a good amount of foot traffic, in which case you'll make that hundred bucks in no time. What I found that a lot of these really curated events that charge the large fees is they're enclosed. They might be in a building, they might be in a hotel, they might be not something that the general public is just gonna stumble on one day. And so while they might be really curated and marketed really well um, on Instagram and it makes it look really nice, let me tell you, I've had organizers try to sell me on their events saying, you know, this is a foothold into a great market. For example, Newport Beach. And yeah, it costs 200 bucks. And I've tried to say, you know what? For me to make $200 and then give it to you is just like, it's too much for me. Is there any chance you want to negotiate? And the answer has pretty much been no all the time. Like, hey, that's a great idea, but I actually have a baker who wants to give me the fee. So sorry, I'm gonna book them and more power to them. Honestly, it's a brilliant model. It makes sense. But for a baker or really anyone selling goods that are priced, you know, in like say the five to under $10 range, um, you just need a lot of foot traffic. And so I tend to say, go for the markets that aren't going to show you anything, right? I've been into a, several coffee shops, several small businesses that allow me to be there for free. They figure, well, they're offering something we don't already have, right? Say I have vegan and gluten-free stuff and they don't already carry vegan and gluten-free stuff. And for me, I'm obviously going to make money and they're just kind enough to let me be there for free. And those I'm all about. I'm all about percentage of sales markets that if they have a slow day, everybody has a slow day. You know, no one's going home rich that day, which is really key because I will say no one's going to look out for you. No one's going to worry about, you know, the fact that you paid a hundred bucks to be somewhere, but you only sold $250 in cookies and you know, $250 in cookies is a good amount. You have to do some work for that. When you start to factor in, okay, my fees and then my time baking, of course, the day before is always the most intense before a pop-up or the evening before driving out there and just checking out my daughter. Driving out there, setting up, sitting there, breaking down, going home. Now, if you come home with excess, then you've got to get rid of that excess. Hopefully not throwing it in the trash. Hopefully find a backup plan for your stuff, which I can talk about in a different video. Um, ideally, you're not coming home with anything. But when you start to factor all that time in and you say made... I don't know, $150, at least in California, you might as well just go get a minimum wage job and work a normal shift. You're, you're better off doing that than starting your own business. Now, don't get me wrong. I've had days like this. I've had days of breaking even. I've had days of literally just not like paying to be there. Early on when I would do these markets that charge 120 bucks to be there. I don't do that anymore. I actually started targeting coffee shops um, to do wholesale, which of course you make less per item than you would selling it yourself, but there's consistency in wholesale. They have their customers. And, and as a new baker who doesn't have that many people who know who I am, I'm letting them take a piece of the pie because they've got the customer base. They pay the rent, they pay for all of their uh, utilities for that building. They've put in the time to build their own brand, their own space, and then they allow me to come in there and I get a piece of the pie, kind of how I look at it. But it's not for everybody. Other people want to make it, you know, they want to make it at market. Go for it, do it. My two cents is just skip the high fee markets. They're generally not worth it. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule. One might be a large food market, right? So these large thingy of um, vegan food festivals that happen here in California, and I'm sure everywhere else in the country, and they charge steep fees, but they bring in, you know, thousands and thousands of people. And I know from other bakers that have done these events, they're worth it, right? Maybe they paid 900 bucks to a thousand bucks to be there, but then they did a good five grand in sales. So, you know, that's pretty worth it. I'm not actually at the point where I could do say $5,000 worth of baked goods because it's just me. It's me and my husband and my one-year-old building this business from the ground up. I hope this is helpful. Definitely down to talk more about this because this is what I do all the time. <laughs> If you liked this video, if you found it useful, feel free to save it for yourself, share it with a friend, comment down below if you have any thoughts, any feedback, similar experiences, differing experiences, would love to hear it. I'll see you next time.